excited to have you all along on this journey through the northern part of Arizona. I guess I'm staying at a haunted hotel. It's brilliant. A great Easter weekend out in the north and east rim of the Grand Canyon. And Breaker Breaker 1-9, we are on the move. I can't believe that this exists, honestly. Tonight we're making scalopina vino. Hey everybody, Anna here along with Sterling and of course Inara. And currently we are in Prescott, Arizona after fleeing the 90 degree heat in Yuma last week. Um, so it was an absolutely beautiful drive to get up here. Um, just wooded little mountains and valleys and everything. I am always being called to like a certain type of terrain. Like I uh, will just like desperately need to be in the desert one minute and then the next day be like, nope, I need to see a mountain right now. So it's a good thing I live in a van because I am just sort of an ever changing nature of a, a kind of a person. camp so excited to have you all along on this journey through the northern part of Arizona thank you for tuning in again this week and I hope you enjoy the show as I was packing up camp I found this that's not, not creepy so Prescott is a super cute little town. Um, it has definitely a mountain town kind of feel to it. Um, you know, mountain bikes everywhere, craft breweries, um, good like organic restaurants, things like that. Um, cute little main street. I just went to the Raven Cafe, which is an organic deli with lots of gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian options. Um, I got the gluten-free lamb burger, which is super delicious. All right, just got done visiting my aunt and uncle here in Prescott, and now I'm gonna start heading north again. So I'm on my way to Jerome, Arizona uh, from Prescott and there's this super windy road that comes from sort of an alpine area and then descends down into like the more red canyon rock. Super cool, really crazy drive, big drop offs and stuff, but absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so this town is cool. It's like built directly on the side of a hill. Just all these different layers. It's an old mining town and they're just like weird, cool, like wineries and like old style buildings and all this stuff. So I found a hotel that I'm hoping I can stay at. It's like this kind of old time hotel, super cool. So fingers crossed they accept pets and um, that I can stay here for the night. So they do allow pets and they have a bathtub, so 
huzzah, I'm gonna stay here tonight. Uh, it's an old hotel um, built in 1898, and I guess it burned down like twice before then, like the actual building itself. And so I walked past a ghost tour as I was coming out of the hotel talking about how the hotel is haunted. They were talking about the most haunted rooms and luckily I'm not in one of them. Um, but they hear like women's voices at night. There's a spectral presence that moves things around. So um, I guess I'm staying at a haunted hotel. Here we go. I will say moving stuff in and out of a hotel, always a little bit of an adventure because of my stuff, pet stuff, the actual pets themselves, which lots of people give you looks as you move a cat down the street into a hotel. <laughs> so like old-timey fancy in here like I should like light up a cigar and drink a glass of scotch visit a brothel Connor Hotel established in 1898 prior to that it had burnt down twice one of the first buildings in town to use brick rather than dry wood it's an awesome place it's going through very interesting transitions when I moved here in 1980 a bit of a flop house but my band got to practice upstairs a lot. And when I spent the night there by myself, what are those footsteps? I don't see anybody. Anyway, now it is a state-of-the-art Victorian beautiful hotel with 12 gorgeous rooms and a knick-knack paddywhack shop. It's brilliant. And I'm <laughs> glad you're here with us with your cat and dog. And they have this dive bar here that seems so cool. It's like a little saloon and they had some to-go stuff. So I went in just masked up and the people in there were just chatting about like the coolest topics and the bartender was so nice and such like a chill, relaxed vibe. And I just like, I miss being able to go out to the bar and chat with the bartender, talk to the people around them, like meet new people in new towns, get the local feel for things you know, without having that like anxiety in the back of your head of like, oh, I, you know, have to stand six feet apart and shouldn't be right next to this person and, you know, have to be masked up. And it's just, it's not the same these days. I'm so excited for life to go back to normal and just be able to like go out and meet strangers along the road and, you know, meet locals and, and do cool, casual things together. <laughs> I just, uh, I miss that a lot. They have free popcorn and free chocolate in the room. So it's like they know everything that I want and need right now. Genius. Highly recommend this place. Well, no hauntings last night. Uh, my room stayed ghost free. Um, <laughs> and so today I am heading out of Jerome and up to Flagstaff where I'm gonna meet up with my boyfriend, Luca. And then we are going to head to the North Rim of the Grand Canyon and Page, Arizona. Now I'm very excited because I'm gonna go see my love again. It's only been about 10 days, but um, we're going on a new adventure, which I'm really excited about. So I'm meeting up with Luca along the highway from uh, Flagstaff up to Page, Arizona. So kind of loud with the highway sounds, but I found this really amazing painted building 
Um, like somebody just completely did the entire thing and it's absolutely epic, like really, really gorgeous. Outside of Page, Arizona, going to Horseshoe Bend. Um, this is a super popular place to take pictures and do all that stuff. So it's very, very busy here, um, but extremely beautiful. So we just got to the Beehive campsites um, near Glen Canyon Dam, which is pretty awesome. It's right off the road. There's six established sites and really beautiful views out on Lake Powell and some other van lifers around. There are dogs running around like crazy, so Inara has to be on top of the van um, instead of going down, just in case. So we're just gonna chill here for tonight and we will see you in the morning. So today we headed out of camp. We are at the grocery store picking up a ton of food, 
firewood, everything to have a great Easter weekend out in the north and east rim of the Grand Canyon. The best way to caravan when you're taking two cars places, get a little walkie talkie, you can still share the, uh, the fun along the way of a road trip. And Breaker Breaker 1-9, we are on the move. I repeat, we are on the move. Breaker Breaker 1-9. We've got a 10-4-6 in here. Uh, Might have found weather. We've got a constant 81 degrees. It's going to be a smooth ride. What do you think about this spot for lunch? Love it. Sounds perfect. There is so, so much, like vast amounts of open land out here, like nothing around, just trees and some mountains in the distance and a big, large field that looks like it's open, but really contains a massive crevasse. <laughs> Definitely have to come back out here with the motorcycles, this crazy network of dirt roads. It'd be so fun to just like go up and explore random spots. So right here, the last mile of this road is Mount Pinnacle. Pretty hilly so be ready. I can't believe how she bounces along in that thing like it's a little doom buggy or something. She's just cruising along. got to a spot it is pretty freaking epic um, but instead of staying here for right now we're gonna get our bikes out and go scout and find the absolute perfect spot So along our bike ride, we found some pretty epic views. So we're going from this spot. To this spot.
So the reason that we're able to stay at this campsite is because we are in the Kaibab National Forest and not the national park. So we can stay here for free um, and also use the drone because we're taking off and landing in national forest rather than national park. So remember you can't fly drones in national parks and uh, we just feel so lucky that we're able to be here. Like I can't believe that this exists, honestly, um, that we could be on national forest land this close to the rim of a national park of the Grand Canyon. So completely obsessed with everything about this camp. Um, tonight we're making scalofina al vino. Uh, I had the good fortune of, uh, of growing up in Italy and, well, actually I was born in England and I was raised in Italy. I moved to Italy when I was seven. My mother's American, but my father's Italian. My grandmother's Italian. So Italy was a big influence in my life before I came to the States when I was 20 to go to college. That's what took me to Santa Fe, which is where I met Anna. So the thing about scalopine al vino, absolutely one of my favorite dishes. Um, is they gotta be really thin. So I'm trying to see if I can Uh, I see. Actually, scalopine al vino are usually made with veal, but I have existential issues with veal like many of us do. So I started using chicken a long time ago. And the trick to scalopine al vino is, ah, look at that, nice and thin, really nice and thin, um, is butter. So when we make scalopine al vino, we're gonna make a mix of butter, mostly butter and olive oil for the flavor and we are going to put some flour. Now, um, Anna is gluten sensitive and I tend to steer away from gluten. So we're gonna be using gluten-free flour tonight. Turns out that Anna and I have, well, we have lots in common, but one of them is our favorite herb on the planet. It's rosemary. So absolutely the trick to amazing rose potatoes is just chunks of rosemary. Now, some people like snip it, make it all like nice and chop it. I don't. And then you just kind of toss the potatoes and it's amazing flavor. I used to live on a boat. I lived on a boat for a year and a half. So I was a boat lifer and um, you definitely learn what meals you can cook easily and the other ones are a little bit more tricky. First of all, I have a, a, a cup of wine that I've set aside already and I'm letting it warm up because most of the time we have wine in the fridge. Uh, because it's like a nice Pinot Grigio. We like it really, you know, nice, crisp and dry. And we like it cold, but I don't want to use cold wine for the for the scalopina. So I'm just letting it kind of warm up, room temp it next to the stove. And another important trick is to put the salt, a little bit of salt, on the chicken before you put it in the flour. Then we're just going to take it, put it in the flour like this. Now, some people put them straight into the butter and olive oil. I like to prep them all first. What I'm gonna do here is put some olive oil, put olio d'oliva, nice fair amount, you know, don't, you don't wanna be too conservative about it. And then we're gonna add some butter. You know, one of the things I love about Italian cooking is that ultimately it's super simple. Fair amount of butter. You know, the butter is really the vehicle for the flavor. And then over here, I have some water boiling for the zucchini. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you in a sec. I'm just gonna cut them really simple. I'm just gonna do these so simple. I'm basically just cutting them into quarters. And I'm gonna cook them for literally like four minutes. Um, a little bit of olio d'oliva. Un di sale. Basta. Here we go. And the water. Definitely don't want it to soak in. You want it to pop a little bit there. I think more civilized people would probably use utensils, but you know, cooking is a very tactile experience. The thing I like about, again, Italian cooking, not everyone uses their hands like me, but it's tactile. It's simple, it's, it's efficient, it's quick. In and out, just take care of the take care of it you see okay so you see how the edging here is starting the chicken is starting to edge there 
it's getting a little bit yellower or a little bit paler I should say that's that's what we're looking for obviously with chicken we need to be very careful for salmonella and various reasons you want it cooked completely but for scalopino vino you don't want it cooked too much it's going to get tough whereas the, the, you want it to cut like butter the reason we want to start getting it nice and hot is because the whole trick about the scalopino vino is when you put the wine in it just and all the the alcohol kind of evaporates and you're left with the flavor of the wine this one's ready this one's ready to turn over it's got a little bit of pink a little bit of pink right there i'm going to turn it over i'm just chasing the ones that are ready now mm, looking good nice and crispy but they're going to be soft on the inside crispy on the outside just like we like them all right so now you can see the oil is surfacing that means they're ready see the oil popping up there I don't want to take it much further than this because it's going to make the chicken go uh, hard. So now I take my vino. Mm. It smells very good in here. We really want it to boil. Like in an ideal world, like this would be, it would be uh, very vivacious right now. I'd like it a little bit hotter in here, but this is what we got. And I'm sure it's going to be great. Meanwhile, let's get these out before they get soggy. These are ready. Cracked pepper. Let's see. If I had some sage, if I had some fresh sage leaf, salvia, I would throw that in right now. And there's the sauce is coming into that reduction. See how it's getting thicker? It takes from the flour, it gets nice and thick. So you can do the same thing with lemon. So you have some lemon juice ready to go. You do the same thing, probably not as much as the wine we put in. Uh, do the same. Okay, look at that. There's that nice creamy sauce. And that's the mix really of the butter and the flour. And there it is. What was that? 10 minutes, ready to go. Darling, we are ready to eat. <laughs> Anticipation. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's really good. I'm now on my second helping. And as you can see, it is almost gone. This is fucking delicious. I don't think I can cuss. <laughs> <laughs> so we definitely abide by the whoever doesn't cook does the cleaning. So I've got the van all cleaned up. Now we're gonna go enjoy the stars and the rest of our night. So we will see you tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. It is Easter Sunday and we got up with the sun this morning to do some sun salutations and just reflect upon new beginnings. Uh, whatever your religious beliefs, I think it's always a good time to just sit back and remember that whatever happens to you, then, you know, you can get up and start fresh and start new. So happy Easter, everybody. Um, happy renewal, happy spring. And we are going to greet the sun this morning. Your Wayfinder tip of the week has to do with just this this week, about renewal, resurrection, about the coming of new things, and about the idea that it is not a scary thing to fail, that you can try at anything you want to, that you can give your best, and if you fail, that's okay, because you can always reinvent yourself. You can always push forward. You don't have to take the first campsite you can go to the second and find your bliss wherever you want. So don't be afraid to reinvent yourself and start anew. Easter pancake breakfast.
Hope you all had an amazing Easter. We are having a fancy little Easter dinner after a wonderful day playing games. Um, we got a fire going and going to enjoy the night. So after our wonderful smoothies for breakfast, we just packed up camp. We uh, took some showers, took some Polaroid pictures, and then started heading out of camp. So very sad to leave this spot. So shooting these YouTube videos with Luca around is proving to be really, really fun as we get more into it. Um, if you missed the story on how we met, I actually was his assistant um, when he was producing a movie way back in the day. And, but um, this is kind of like back to making movies together. So if you want to see a little bit of the behind the scenes footage, head over to Patreon. Man, that's a treacherous road. I don't know how you did that. So after getting off that crazy dirt road at last, we are now heading down to Lee's Ferry, which is where boats put in for the Grand Canyon um, when they're doing a big boating trip, which I've done a couple of times. If you follow me, you definitely know that because I talk about it as basically the most life-changing thing that I've ever done. It's just like a certain scent of like the Grand Canyon. It's like sagey and you can smell the water and like the hot sand and I like have just been standing here being like <sighs> memories oh god everybody thank you so much for joining us this week as I explored northern Arizona first on my own and then with Luca um, we had an awesome time and hope that you enjoy everything on this episode remember her filming locations everything like that uh, then find the patreon linked below we are going our separate ways for a few days sadly <laughs> and then meeting up again next week so I will leave you here when I take off I have no idea where I'm going from here but just gonna kind of start meandering up north I cannot wait to see you all next week and thank you so much for joining us and thank you for letting me be a part of this episode it was so much fun to be exploring and jumping around in the canyons <laughs> and now down here at this beautiful river and I look forward to many more adventures Mwah. See you next week. Ciao.